welcome friends to my youtube channel now on my last lecture i have finished the second chapter of uh, classical mechanics that is gravitation okay from today i shall going to discuss the third chapter okay that is the conservation theorem of classical mechanics okay so let's start so chapter 3 conservation theorems conservation theorems in classical mechanics okay so here <coughs> we are going to discuss few important conservation theorems okay so first of all we are going to discuss an important issue that is called work energy theorem okay so what is it so let us explain now from newton's second law we can write force this is equals to rate of change of linear momentum okay or we can simply write m into dv dt fine now if we multiply both sides by v so this becomes mv dv dt okay now what is this force multiplied by velocity that means power and power means the rate of change of work done so simply rate of change of work done that is dw dt that we can write force multiplied by velocity is power and power is nothing but the rate of change of work done okay and this can be written as d dt of half m v square okay so this is simply we can write dw this is equals to d of half m v square okay <coughs> now if we integrate this expression so what we get we get d of x means x so if the initial limit of integration is u and that you can write v so this can simply write as half m v square minus half m u square so this is the basically work energy conservation theorem that is the work done must be equal to change in kinetic energy okay so this is the simple form of uh, work energy theorem that we started that we start from newton's second law okay first of all you write the newton's second law then multiply both sides by v and f into v is nothing but rate of change of work done and this term can be written in this way d dt of half m v square then you just integrate this expression within the limits u to v that is initial and final velocity you can get this so work done by a system or on a system is nothing but the change in kinetic energy so this is the work energy conservation theorem okay so this is called the work energy conservation theorem okay so simply we can write work done this is equal to change in kinetic energy okay this is known as work energy theorem okay so this is the first thing that we discuss that is the work energy conservation theorem okay now let us come to an another issue that is before knowing the other theorems we must have to know about conservative force that is the second thing that we are going to discuss is conservative forces that we have to discuss what are 
conservative force okay now previously we <coughs> we have heard this term conservative force okay so what is the general definition so this is a type of force okay then work done by this force around a closed path is zero that is the work done by such forces around the closed path is always zero okay that we told earlier that is work done by these forces around a closed path around the closed path is always zero so how we can express this mathematically so so if this is a initial state and this is final state now suppose a particle moves from a to b via acb path suppose just take it and uh, <coughs> returns from initial state a that is from b to a via the path bda then starting from the point a if a system moves from moves into again original position then it is a closed path obviously so what you can write for conservative force field you can write this or you can say dr no problem you can also write dl or dr as you wish so this is the definition of conservative force that is the work done by this force around the closed path is zero so by using stokes theorem what we can write we can write this is surface integral curl f dot ds this is simply zero so since ds is arbitrary its coefficient vanishes so curl f is equal to zero so that's we see that if we take curl of conservative force it is always zero so curl of conservative force is always zero okay now what are the example of conservative forces that you all know <coughs> previously we have learned the chapter central force and central force is obviously a conservative force that you all know okay so central force is always conservative okay that means you can take the gravitational force that is you take the gravitational force this is a conservative force you take say electrostatic force this is also conservative force okay this is also a conservative force so since central force is conservative you can uh, always take these forces as conservative force so this is fine okay so this is the definition of conservative force okay now so again previously we have heard that central force can be expressed as the gradient of some scalar potential so similarly we can say conservative force can be expressed as the gradient of some scalar potential some scalar potential okay conservative force can be expressed as the gradient of some scalar potential so how we can uh, verify it uh, so we know that potential energy in general is a function of position coordinates obviously so in maximum cases the potential energy is a function of position coordinates so since dv is a perfect differential that can be written as del v del x dx del v del y dy del v del z 
डिजिट ओके फाइन एंड दिस टर्म कैन बी रिटर्न एज आई इंटू डेल वी डेल एक्स प्लस जे डेल वी डेल वाई प्लस के डेल वी डेल जेड डॉट आई डी एक्स प्लस जे डी वाई प्लस के डी जेड सो दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एज डेल वी एंड दिस इज सिंपली डी आर ओके that we can write that dv equals to del v dot dr that is always true now again the gradient of potential is a measure of force that we always know okay that is the gradient of potential is a measure of force that means if this we can write minus dv dr so from which we can write dv this is simply minus f dot dr so again what we find dv previously del v dot dr a dot dr this is simply zero so this is simply del v plus f dot dr this is simply zero okay now since dr is arbitrary its coefficient will vanish okay since dr is arbitrary we can write a plus del v this is equals to zero so this is simply a equals to minus grad v okay so conservative forces can be expressed as the gradient of some scalar potential okay so till now we have discussed <coughs> the definition of conservative force with example and we see that conservative force can be expressed as the gradient of some scalar potential and uh, work done by conservative force around a closed path is always zero that always that we discuss okay that is carl f equals to zero again you can verify it so if you take carl f so what we get carl of grad v is always zero this is a vector identity del cross del v this is always zero so again you verify that carl f is zero so this is absolutely true okay now let us move to an another theorem that is energy conservation theorem that is under conservative force field the total mechanical energy of a system remains constant okay so under conservative force field under conservative force field total mechanical energy total mechanical energy of a system remains constant that is we can write kinetic energy plus potential energy this is constant okay so this is the energy conservation theorem so we can easily verify it okay how okay so how we can verify it let's check say this is p this is q so what will be the amount of work done in taking an object from p to q that we all know if we call it wpq so what will be the work done this fine so we get simply if we simplify it what we get force is nothing but mass into acceleration and dr we can write v dt 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 cancels so v dv you get v square by 2 that is p to q half m v q square minus half m v p square so this is kinetic energy at q and this is kinetic energy at p okay 
so this is the amount of work done in taking an object of say mass m in taking from this to this tq minus tp and again <coughs> This work done can also be represented by potential energy. That is, you can also express this term in terms of potential energy. It's very simple because F dr means F dot dr means minus dv. Directly we can write minus dv. So this is Q to P dv. This is simply Vp minus Vq. Okay. Uh, this is uh, simply Vp minus Vq. So both are work done. So you can be take both are equal so tq minus tp this is vp minus vq so what you get tp plus vp this is equal to tq plus vq so thus you can clearly see total energy at p equals to total energy at q this is constant or you can also write in another line that is ep equal to eq no problem or if you do up to this, it's okay. So, uh, total energy at P, total energy at Q. So, this is what up to today. In today's lecture, I shall discuss the work energy theorem and the uh, energy conservation theorem. And all before knowing energy conservation theorem, we have to know few things about conservative forces. Now, in our next class, I shall going to discuss about uh, system of particles that is linear momentum and angular momentum conservation theorems okay and a few other issues so if you don't subscribe my channel then kindly subscribe it to get latest videos on physics so uh, link will be given in the description box and if you have any query then just write it in comment section okay thank you